All right, we're looking at the 2014 AP Physics B exam. This is question number four, uh, and it's primarily an electrostatics problem. I'm going to get right to it. So we've got two point charges fixed at the coordinates shown above. One is going to be six nanocoulombs positive. The other one is negative two nanocoulombs, and we know the distances from the origin. We want to know the magnitude of the x and y components of the net electric field at that origin. Let's take a look at it. This positive charge is going to have a net electric field uh, not a net electric, but an electric field in general that's uh, pointed away from it, and that's because it's positive. Electric field, by definition, always points away from the positive charge. The negative is going to have its electric field uh, pointing toward it, so instead of away from it. And again, that's just by definition. Well, if you look at the one from each that goes through the origin, we will see here that, and I'm going to erase those field lines now, the positive charge will have its electric field from the origin pointed to the left, and the negative charge will have its electric field through the origin pointed upward, because again, that vector is pointed towards the negative, and this one's pointing away from the positive. So if we want to know the magnitudes of the x and y components of the net electric field, well, it's nice and simple. The y component will be the electric field due to the first charge because it's the only one that has a y field and the x component will be the electric field due to the second charge because it's purely in the x so this is not really going to be too complex we're going to say the electric field in the y will be k times the q of the one divided by the distance that one is away squared K is Coulomb's constant, and you know the true value is 8.99 by 10 to the 9, but your table of information gives us to you as 9 by 10 to the 9. You're encouraged to use that number. So 9 by 10 to the 9, and that's going to be Newton's square meters, and that entire thing divided by C squared, charge squared. And then you're going to have the charge of, remember, Q1. So that's going to be, and here's where you don't need to plug the negative in, because this equation here will us, help us determine magnitude. We've already figured out direction. It's up. We've already indicated that. So do not plug the negative in. This is a vector term. We're going to determine direction utilizing uh, the rules and definitions provided. So we're going to write in 2 times 10 to the negative 9 coulombs. And then that entire top quantity, make sure you're using parentheses when you use your calculator. We're going to divide that uh, by the distance it is away from the origin, and then we're going to square that. And it shows us it's 0 by 3 meters, so it's 3 squared. And this whole thing comes out to 6 newtons per coulomb. Make sure you practice this calculator work. Make sure you are uh, indeed getting these numbers. I would use parentheses if you do not get that. Oh, I just lied. That is the wrong one. That was for x. It's actually 2 newtons per coulomb. Okay, and so that is simply the electric field due to the negative 2 nanocoulomb charge. I'm going to slide this over and we're going to go ahead and do the x, which we already said is simply the electric field due to the second charge. So it's going to be uh, ex will be k, which is 9 by 10 to the 9. I'm not going to put the units in this time times q, which is 6 by 10 to the negative 9 coulombs, 6 nano coulombs. We're going to divide that by 3 squared, and this is the one that ends up being 6 newtons per coulomb. That's all you had to do for A. Now B wants us to draw a single vector, pay attention here, not the components, that originates at 0, 0, or the origin and uh, indicates the net electric field. Now let's look at this top triangle I already drew, or this, I'm sorry, this top, these top two vectors. See how they're vectors. Remember, vectors most appropriately are drawn tail to tip. So I'm going to redraw that green one off over here to show that they will result in having the vector that's up and at an angle up and to the left. That green one is appropriately drawn smaller than the red one because it's only a magnitude of two, where the red one's a magnitude of six. So you should have a uh, relatively um, shallow vector. And if you look at your units, or your boxes are appropriate. So like go six boxes to the left, 
one, two, three, four, five, six. That represents EX. And then two boxes up, one, two, that represents EY. That is the vector that we are looking at for part B. Now, I, I do not believe you needed to be as specific and accurate as these boxes show. We're looking for a relatively low angled vector up and to the left. C, calculate the electric potential at the origin. AP Physics loves to have you either do potential first and then the electric field or vice versa. And they like to really mess with you a little bit because it's where you get confused on which ones are vectors and which ones are scalar terms. Uh, uh, potential, electric potential is a scalar term. I like to think of uh, positive as uh, high elevation and negative as low elevation. When the two come together, you might have some leftover high elevation or some leftover low elevation or it might be level terrain or if we have two positives it makes it really higher in elevation and two negatives really lower in elevation but it won't tell you the overall direction uh, because there is no direction it's a scalar term so we basically have to include your positives and negatives or ultimately uh, your net electric potential or your your total voltage is going to be the voltage due to the first charge plus the voltage due to the second charge and there are no x's and y's that we worry about it is simply kq1 over its distance from the origin plus kq2 over its distance from the origin and you and all you got to worry about here is maintaining proper sign so q1 if you recall is my negative charge so it's going to be 9 by 10 to the 9 times negative 2 by 10 to the negative 9 divide that by uh, 3 meters and then you're going to add your 9 by 10 to the 9 times its uh, the positive charge which is 6 nanocoulombs and we're going to divide that by 3 uh, you end up getting 12 and it's electric potential so we can just say volts there are plenty of other acceptable units that you could use, but 12 volts is, I think, the best. Uh, D, we're now adding a third charge. So we're going to take the third charge. I'm going to quickly sketch the negative 2 nanocoulombs and the positive 6 out here. And we're going to take a third charge from somewhere very far away, and we're going to bring it to the origin. So we're going to bring this positive 3 here. And by bringing it here, we want to know if the total work done by the outside force is positive negative zero. So simply put, if the outside force had to actually apply a force to move it here, it'd be positive. If the outside force was not needed, i.e. the field pulled it here, it would be negative. There's a couple ways we can do it. I like to look at the overall um, electric potential. And I need to realize that I'm bringing a positive thing to a higher positive source. So it's like causing its remember if we treat electric potential as a mountain and we treat the negative electric potential as a valley uh, and we think about this will always be true for positive charges and, and really opposite for negative I like to say it like this if I have a positive charge here it'll naturally fall into the valley and it'll take an outside force to bring it to a higher mountain because my electric potential at that spot is positive 12 volts, I need to bring this up a mountain. And so it requires positive work. Now, how do I justify this? Well, we justify it by looking at work is voltage times charge. They're both positive. So mathematically, my work is also positive. If you want to look at it conceptually and back it up with math, I think it'll help you retain your knowledge longer. But ultimately, the answer is positive. And if you simply say that the work is positive because both the electric potential difference and the charge are positive, you're good to go. All right, ignore this down here. And then finally, E, we want to calculate the net force. And again, AP likes to have you do it. It likes to have you do field, voltage, and force. Which one you do first really depends on the problem. Uh, here, you can go down this long rabbit hole of calculating a bunch of vectors for each, or you can remember or recognize that the total electric force acting on any charge at any location is equal to the magnitude of that charge times the net electric field at that location. This is, I think, by far the easiest way of doing this one. So F, uh, we're looking at the magnitude of the net force on Q3. 
Okay, remember it's the net fork. So we're going to ultimately have uh, recognize, remember this one's negative, this one's positive, so we're going to have a force pulling it up, and this one's positive, this one's positive, so we're going to have a force pulling it to the left. So your net force will be up here and to the left. But that's what I'm saying. Instead of going into your x's and y's, I think your net force is best using your Q, which is what they gave you, 3 nanocoulombs, times your net field. Well, your net field is what you had already calculated well earlier, uh, your net electric, oh, actually, I'm sorry, we did not calculate our net field. We should do that. So well, let's find my net electric field. If you notice, I've got uh, 6 newtons per coulomb to the left and 2 newtons per coulomb up. So my net electric field, which I want to plug in right here, will simply be Pythagorean of those two numbers. So 2 squared plus 6 squared. Let me toss that in my calculator real quick, and then we're going to square root all of that. So we're looking at radical 40, uh, which is going to be 6.32. So my net electric field is 6.32 newtons per coulomb. Again, that's the combination of the two vectors. So that's what I'm going to plug in right here to give my overall net force at that spot should be, let me do some math, uh, you're going to get 1.9 times 10 to the negative 8 newtons. Okay, that's it for uh, number, what was this, number four from the 2014 AP uh, Physics B exam.